Hello everyone and welcome to today's video, uh, especially Ken. Welcome Ken. This is the 93 dash harness that I pulled out for you over the past few days. I want to show it to you so I can get your approval and get it out in the mail. There's about this many flaws with it plastic wise and maybe this many flaws with it uh, in a connector or something I want to show you or something that's been uh, repaired. So I'll go through about a dozen little flaws I found with it and I'm going to address a few before I ship it. Uh, but I did want to show you, Ken, this is the car I showed you the other day that was in my backyard that I had to dig out. I'll show you the production date here of it. 8 of 92, so it is a 93. It's got all the 93 specific goodies with it. So, And even that dash harness over there has the 93 only part number on it. So the car I bought running, driving, and rusted. So there was not an issue with the car electronically. That's why I wanted to pull this harness. I knew it was in good unmolested shape and good functional condition. So um, I take out the dash today and I'm, every connector is coming apart, coming apart, nice and easy. I broke a clip here. Oops. Okay. You know, I doing my normal routine and uh, get to this area of the car where it connects to this tail light harness. Now, everything here is pretty much covered by the dash and, you know, isn't exposed to any elements or anything. But this tail light harness is so close to the carpet that some moisture did creep up where the dash harness connects to the taillight harness, Ken. I'll have to show you back on your harness over there. Um, you can see that, so this, this is on the taillight harness side. So this is not a problem for you. This, your harness is fine. These two pins broke when I separated them. Looks like even a piece or two of them are still in there. So this broke on the car side, my side, the harness that you're not taking side. Um, I wanna show you over on this harness, which two terminals those are, just so if there's an issue, uh, which it's a speaker wire and something else. It's not even an important connector, really. I mean, it's important. You want to have your speakers, but it's not like your fuel pump or anything like that that I'm aware of. So, Ken, let's see. I'll start by showing this 93 part number tag. Gosh, it's so hard to read right above my thumb. It does say F3ZB right above my thumb. I don't know if I'm catching it. It says it there. It's got it one more time here under the bottom. It's an F3. 3z so it's a 93 specific thing i learn i learn about these cars every time i take one apart and it's just solidified in my mind again that yes 93 is a one-year thing so uh ken it's a 93 harness i pulled it from that car i showed you this is the the bundle of wires that meet with the tail light harness it was only this black connector and again i showed you on the it, it broke on the opposite side so this was all good all these pins are still in here it was this blue and white wire that was one of them which actually if you look at this speaker wire connector here it's a blue and white wire so this is going to be probably your dash uh, your door uh, speaker and with this being in the tail light harness is probably your quarter panel speaker um, I'm gonna try and get the light in there you can see see that connector let's see if my phone will focus there it's just that one connector in the top right corner that was that one and then the opposite corner this bottom left corner the terminals are still totally there uh, but if anything does give you an issue when you plug it in it's gonna be one of those two pins that's the only metal manipulation i have really seen on this entire harness every other connector looks good every other terminal looks good and, and even these don't look bad they were just uh so close to the carpet that uh the moisture crept up and did its thing so i did want to show you those i'm going to try and fly through this harness and i'll only stop on flaws uh, we're in the engine compartment right now so we're starting with the daytime running lights connector ken i don't think you're using that this is the wiper squirter connector. It's totally in good shape. The clips are there. The terminals are good. We are now uh, inside the engine compartment. We've got the main power from the starter solenoid, which is in good solid shape. Just got a little oxidation. It hasn't had um, a nut on it in probably two or three years. So just a little oxidation on the open metal. Same here, a little oxidation on the open metal. But this is the power window circuit breaker. This is the main feed and all the fusible links to the dashboard, which I didn't go over again and check every single fusible link here because I know this harness is, is coming out of a running car uh, and I'm sure it's going to be fine. Uh, we got a ground wire here with a good eyelet. Everything's solid, no corrosion. This is for your starter solenoid. I don't see any corrosion. Even the insulation on all of this stuff is still flexible and good. Nothing's broken off, brittle, flaking. 
So there shouldn't be any exposed copper like anywhere on this thing. I can't say I've even seen any exposed copper, which is of course what you want. You got a, a grade A harness order in with me. This is where it meets with the, oh, this is the headlight harness connector. Airbag connector. There's, there, so we're, we're, we're getting past the power source stuff. I think we've covered everything there in the engine compartment area. Yep. Uh, as we move closer to the firewall now, we are at, this is where it meets with the engine harness. All those pins are good. Engine ran good, no check engine light. Everything was fine with that. These are the windshield wiper connectors, which usually are broken. And these are both good. They're not, the clips are there, they're not broken. Terminals are good, got their dielectric grease still in there, so that's good. Uh, the only flaw here is this low brake fluid clip. So this is underneath your master cylinder. It's really hard to access. I'm sure a lot of people just break it so they can dang disconnect the thing. Um, and I do see it's been like manipulated and somebody bit this with the pliers at some time or something. They are really hard to get out. It's a tight fit and a weird upside down kind of connector. Ken, so it's got one broken clip there. I hope that's not a deal breaker. If I have time before I leave today, I'm gonna to replace any of the plastic issues that I've seen here with any of this stuff. Uh, might not get to every single one, but uh, none of them are really all that catastrophic. Um, but I do have, in case anybody else is interested in a dash harness like this, you'll get the same type of video um, and care with it. Or if you really just need connector ends, I do sell on my website pretty much every pigtail because I have damaged harnesses as well that are not repairable. Um, so you can get this dashboard connector. You can get wiper connectors. EncoreMPW.com, same as my YouTube name. You can find pretty much any pigtail from a dashboard harness, an engine harness. I'm trying to get all the connectors up there. It's a lot of work. This, there's probably 80 connectors just on this harness alone. So just one harness at a time. Um, just wanted to throw that out there in case anybody is here today because they have a problem maybe with their harness or they need one. So we've gotten to now the firewall grommet after... Uh, coming across the broken clip on the low brake fluid. Uh, we are into some cruise control stuff. Now this I think I broke today is the actual low, uh, the uh, brake pedal switch for your brake lights. So I broke this connector today. Ken, I will have that replaced before I put it in the box. Um, just want to show you how thorough I've been. I already look at, I look at it once or twice. I've memorized everything wrong with it. And it's not that much stuff. Like I said, five things of plastic, maybe five things uh, with the wiring itself that I want to address and uh, it should be good to go. Uh, so we're still over by like the pedal assembly area. I did want to mention to you or anybody else, if now this car came out of as an automatic, so it's got a jumper here, which has to do with the park neutral and the starting safety switch. So Ken, if you're putting this in a manual transmission car, you're gonna have to take this jumper out. When these get plugged into the, the clutch pedal assembly, you need both these plugged in. We're on an automatic, it just sends this actually down to the shifter. The shift, so once you shift it into neutral or park, it's the same thing as pushing in the clutch. And uh, in the middle of the dashboard, I'll show you when we get there, is another connector that you're gonna wanna plug in as well uh, for a manual transmission application. Um, okay, so clutch switches, cruise control, brake light switch. I broke the clip. Now we're at the terminals for the tail light harness once again. So I'm just gonna show this is for the transmission harness that goes underneath the driver's seat and out the trans tunnel. I see one, one terminal there, the second one on the top. It might've had a little corrosion on it. It looks a little out of shape, but it's full solid and everything. It's not gonna give you issues, I wouldn't assume. Uh, this is another tail light harness. So these are gonna do everything back there. These are inertia switch and fuel pump and brake lights, turn signals, probably doing uh, license plate lights, all that stuff. Probably all goes to through this dash harness and on down to the tail light harness. So some of this is like airbag sensors. Uh, but again, I didn't see any problems with the wiring harness anywhere in here. Just those two terminals that got stuck on that other harness. Uh, and there's just a tiny bit of material missing from two connectors there. So I'm going to spin this so I get my orientation here correct. All right, so we've been engine compartment. We've gone through the firewall, Ken. I'm sorry to take so much time to show this, um, but you know, for what you paid and what you're expecting, I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, so there's no surprises. And if you have any questions, I can answer them or concerns before I ship it. This is a gauge cluster connector, one of two. Uh, I wanna stay on this one for now and just kind of move left to right. Um, so I'll show you the second one in a minute. This is, uh, Ken, I believe I showed this to you earlier, that somebody had replaced the headlight harness connector 
with it being from a GT, this is the fog light connector. What Ford, I believe, did is they ran the power for the headlights and the fog lights through that headlight switch, which would cause those to melt, get out of shape. I start on fire. My 88 GT started on fire there. So because this is a GT, that's my guess is that, that the only reason that that connector has been changed is because it got hot. They bought a replacement, which are actually commonly available. They call it like a headlight switch replacement uh, kit or something. So Ken, I'm going to go through and take all this electrical tape off and put my double stamp on there that they're connected properly. Um, and this, it won't look like this when you receive it. It's kind of an upgrade or a, at least I'd call it a, a, a good repair. Um, if anything's been manipulated on this harness, which I think this is the only customer done manipulation, um, that's a good thing to have. It's new plastic, it's new terminal ends, it's new wires, I believe, probably a new, a new set of pigtail wires here. So not a bad thing to have to address and I'll have it addressed before I ship it. Um, they also did put uh, aftermarket speakers in the dashboard. So Ken, if it's a big deal to you, and they didn't even use good quality wire. Um, so they tapped into the, the speaker wire, cut this end, put a, you know, the two small spade connectors on it. I don't know if you want to go aftermarket speakers. If you want factory speaker connectors, let me know. I'll include them. No problem. I can, if I have time, I'll even install them. So you can just click everything back together. I don't think we talked too much about what your vehicle is. It's not my business to really know. I just deliver what you ordered. Um, but you know, that's why I'm saying if it's automatic, you need this, if it's manual, do that. If you're going to use speakers, we'll change it. If not, um, you know, I'd like to try and get you everything I can ready to install. Uh, this is the dimmer switch connector. So now we're getting uh, into the steering column area a little bit more because this is basically, so I've got the part right here. It's, it's kind of interesting. Ford did make this a very specific 92, 93, like upgrade. Uh, for anybody watching, you might remember the old dimmer switches had a big coil resistor uh, inside. You could see just a big spring of what looked like copper wire in there, and it would get corroded, and it really wouldn't work well. And I think that's why Ford went with this new kind of resistor pad design. But still, no matter when this is being uh, used, it, there's resistance in here, and it's going to create heat. No, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, it's just the nature of the way that the part operates. So what I think happened um, with this broken clip, I broke this clip today, I'll be honest with you, uh, taking it off. Now, I'm very picky and careful when I take stuff off. I very rarely break stuff. But because this dimmer switch runs off resistance, I believe it brittles out and dries out these connectors. And I've even noticed if you look at the sun glare, uh, on this side, it's, it seems more flat. On that side, it seems like even this newer design might still be getting a little hot. Like that seems like it might be warped a little bit. This one, not so much. It's pretty flat on this end. And that's the clip, the connector that broke was on that side. So I'm going to assume I broke this clip today because it's still a, a bad way to do these. A poor design it still gets hot. Um, I don't know if it's worth changing everything out today to, to delay your package to change this connector, but if I have time, it's four clips. It's pretty easy. You ordered grade A. I'm going to try and get everything done that I can without delaying the part getting there this weekend. Um, fuse box, Ken, you asked me about. There she is in wonderful condition. Uh, it's not been hot. It's not been heat cracked. It's not been over tightened. You should be able to bolt this right back in your car. Nothing's been taken out of it. Take taken out of it. The flashers. The circuit breakers, everything's there. And the best thing about this harness and this part of the harness is that nobody ever tapped into this. There's no alarm system. There's no police lights. There's no nothing. When I was a kid, I'll tell you, I probably butchered two or three of these to do fog lights and all kinds of weird, you know, I had a CB radio and a Mustang back in the 90s. Um, and I'm sure that's a very healthy, easy access spot to get power. This one, great shape. And it's fully complete. Um, dimmer, okay, now we're definitely in the center of the, the steering column area. These are dimmer, or a key dinger, I should say, the buzzer when your key is in, um, airbag stuff, horn, cruise control, all in good shape. These are turn signal switch, good, clean, bright terminals. I didn't break any clips taking these out. So this is all in your multi-function switch there. Turn signal, bright, wiper delay, washer squirt all of those are really good oh i just noticed a broken clip looks like there's dirt in it i'm gonna say that was done before because i was pretty careful today taking that off it doesn't look clean but it is one one clip and i, and I don't think it's worth uh, i just noticed that uh, and i don't think it's worth trying to pull out eight pins here to, to replace it for that clip i'm sure it'll hold just fine um, apologize about the five of this and five of that but it is a 93 
you know, 03, 30, 30 year old, 30 year old harness. Um, now another place people usually tap into get power is out of the ignition switch. And this one again, winner, winner, chicken dinner, no molestation whatsoever. Nobody tapped into it. Nobody did an amplifier from it. Nobody, not, nothing. Um, this clip was broken. One of two sides was broken when I got in there today. Like I said, the car was running fine. Um, I don't think it's worth, here's another one. I really don't think it's worth taking all 10 of these out of here, or however many, and trying to replace it just for that one. It's just, Ken, I hope you'll agree with me. Wrapping a zip tie, if you're really concerned, just over the ignition switch to hold that tight. It saves a lot of headache and it'll hold forever. Uh, hope that that's not a problem. I don't want to change this. I do want to send this as is. Uh, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just got a broken clip. Uh, but at least I've gone through and checked everything out for you so you have no no surprises when it gets there. And this is a shift interlock cable. So I don't know if you're going to use an automatic or not, but that's a sensor for a shift interlock cable. We are now in the radio uh, heater control kind of area of the dash harness. Uh, I'm going to just stop and say that this is all original tape, which I love to see. That means nobody's hit anything from us underneath here. Nobody's ever been here before, but it is falling apart. So if you want to get a brand new roll of some thick electrical tape or some of that insulation, the protectors, there isn't any wire protector on here. Cheap ass Ford, this kind of stuff. If you want to get some of this kind of stuff, wrap it around here first or sheath it around here first and wrap it up. I suggest that just so you don't have any damage come from it. Uh, but I just removed this today off of the original dash frame, which is right there. And there was no rub spots. It was, it was taut. It's just, it didn't want to come off with, without disintegrating basically this uh, 30 year old hockey tape. So we're, uh, here's that second connector I had mentioned earlier about the pedal assembly. This is for, I believe, cruise control to disengage. When you're on the expressway and you push the clutch in, uh, it will disengage your cruise control. And for automatics, they have these loops in here. So if you're going stick shift, you want to uh, take this one out, plug it in, and the other red one I had showed earlier. Where's my radio wires? I'm so proud of these radio wires. I thought, Ken, when I showed you last week that there were uh, in, maybe an issue in the radio area. I was mistaken. These are unmolested, perfect, never tapped into radio wires. I'm so proud to show these to you as well. The easiest place to put an aftermarket radio in is to snip it here. Um, this one, it looks like they never actually did an aftermarket radio. If you ever choose to do that, please buy the installation kit as not to hack up this beauty here um, or ask me i've got the uh, male ends of these uh, actually for sale online so you could uh, install an aftermarket radio without hacking anything up uh, so we're still radio loving it heater ac control stuff these, some of these are there's like airbag modules uh, a chime box relay there's some things here behind the kind of behind the radio that are mounted to the dash did not see any problems, any burns, any repairs. I, none of this stuff's really all that important uh, or have that much draw on any of the parts where there would really be an issue caused. Uh, all the HVAC stuff is in good shape. So these are behind your heater controls. You got your blower motor, selector. You got, well, temperature just gets a light bulb. I believe this is for the, the uh, illumination on there. So none of these are broken. All the clips are good. Uh, going back to my example of this dimmer switch and the resistor inside and how it creates heat by giving you a swing of dim to bright. Uh, the blower motor is the same way. You've got high, low, medium. This connector breaks on me almost every single time because of that same reason. I'm getting a little away from the HVAC stuff, but it, this is the one that goes to the heat, the blower motor resistor in the heater box. And this thing is always brittle you can't you can't even pull the connector straight back uh let alone lift the clips they break as soon as they move they break so this is i could go through another 10 dash harnesses and maybe not find one that's uh you know even got one clip they always seem to break ken uh, if i have one i will uh replace it before i ship it as long as i'm done in the next uh, about two hours so i can get this shipped today uh, if not, I would like to get one to you just to hold it in there. Uh, it's actually a very stiff connector. I mean, you would really have to pull on it to even pull it out without clips. Um, but I think that's important to be there. So I'll go through a little extra effort here to get you a, a, a clip. Uh, it looks very easy. If you just hit these yellow pins, it'll release a tooth. 
and each wire will come out. So you could do this if I shipped you a connector later, but I am gonna try and get this all done or at least throw one in the box so you have everything to go together. I just wanna get it to you quickly so that you can get it installed. And then if there's any terminal connector end stuff we need to go over later, uh, that, sh that would be no problem. I hope for either of us. Uh, again, it's a 30 something year old harness and I think we're th three quarters of the way through here without any real major problems. I'm just being extremely nitpicky. As if I wanted, if, if I were buying a harness, I'd want somebody to go through it and tell me everything I'm getting and everything they saw with it. I, I can't promise perfect. There probably isn't a perfect harness anywhere, um, but this is is very good, and I, I still think a great A for you. Uh, these are the the hazard and defroster switch connectors that are on the instrument bezel on the right hand side. These are usually a clip that break. I'm very surprised they've gotten these out without cracking them. Um, so that'll hold tight. No terminal problems there. So we've gone HVAC dashboard radio. And now we're kind of over into the glove box. Nothing really exciting over here. You got a, a button that releases your uh, hatch or trunk. Uh, you got an illumination, a glove box light. And I think that's like a turn signal or a hazard relay there. So nothing really exciting here. But again, no manipulation. We're almost done, everybody. Uh, there's probably only you and me, Ken, watching this at this point. But anybody else who's watching, I'd appreciate if you give me a thumbs up. If you watch this this long and uh, subscribe to my channel. You obviously like the content. And if you have anything to say about this, go ahead and comment below. And if you want to order parts, uh, you can again go to my website, EncoreMPW.com or send me an email, sales at EncoreMPW.com. All right, Ken, this is uh, on the opposite side of the car. So now we're in the passenger's pillar. This meets up with the uh, there's some other taillight stuff over there on the right-hand side. I don't even know what some of this stuff is. I know this is another dash speaker wire that's been cut. This is a door speaker wire supply. Um, you got me. I mean, I could, I could figure it out, but it's nothing important. These are going to be... Oh, I think this is a dome light harness. I, this green with the yellow tracer. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a dome light. Uh, I, maybe your vanity mirrors. I'll go over there and show you real quick in the passenger side. But that's your harness, Ken. If you'll if you'll let me uh, tatter, uh, take care of those two two or three little tattered items, uh, I'll get it assembled. Yeah. So that one green and yellow, that's our dome light harness going up. Oh, okay. The green one meets up with the engine harness. So does the gray one, and that's what they look like on this side. Yeah, this side the floorboard's still intact somewhat, so there wasn't any issues there. But uh, thanks everyone for your attention, Ken. If you like this harness, if you'll let me uh, go through and I'll fix the just make sure that this is in good shape when it's out the door the connections are good he didn't just twist them together and leave them they'll be soldered they'll be shrunk wrapped they'll be tightened up and protected um, and then just a couple other clips that i need to do um, and i think i can get it out today uh, I, I will i won't not leave until it's out today i just wanted to show this to you get your approval so real quick uh the broken clip on the low brake fluid out here i broke a clip on the brake light switch right here so i want to get that fixed um this is broken here but i don't think it's a big deal a lot of people just run a zip tie through between these wires and around their ignition switch and hold that tight when they install it headlight switch speaker wire i broke the one clip for the dimmer switch that was over here because i blamed it on poor design and it getting hot don't forget your jumpers if you're going manual Radio's awesome. Blower motor is cracked, just like the dimmer switch. And that's the only stuff I would be touching before I shipped it. And anything else, like I said, that uh, one harness here, if there were any installation issues later with a rear, a rear speaker. Um, but that's it. I got to go. Oh, and again, reminder that I, I did not see that until now. And I think it's best to just leave it. Turn signal switch stuff. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you soon, Ken, and uh, hope to see you all back on the channel for future content. Have a good day. Thank you.